First off, this might be single-handedly the most complex involved thing that this camera does. Secondly, it's brand new. I've never seen this in a camera before. Nikon's never had it in a camera before. And so there's a lot of challenges in trying to explain things for the very first time. Uh, because when I first flipped it over to version 4.0, I decided, all right, let's give this a try. And I set it up and nothing worked. And I made some more changes and nothing worked. Uh, this is a pretty particular little feature. And this is something that you're going to want to really experiment with if you want to use it out in the field. You do not want to be rushed in time trying to set this thing up. It is somewhat finicky until you learn how it works. So let me get in and try to share my knowledge with you on how to get this set up. So when you get in here, this is going to be the last item in either the photo shooting menu or the video recording menu. Uh, you're going to see a couple of options. Uh, the main one being start, and it's going to send you to this screen here. And there's going to be six different options on there that you can use. Now, there's also a way to save certain types of setups. And so let's say you have a couple of setups for wildlife and a couple of setups for sports. And I think those are the, the main genre that this is targeted towards. You can have those saved in there so you don't have to go in and reprogram everything uh, for these different options. In fact, let me give you the quick real world tour first, and then we'll do the technical tour. All right, so on the camera, in the menu, we need to go up to the shooting. This is going to be basically the same with the video, but we're going to go through it with the shooting menu. So if we want to go down to the very bottom, you know that if we go up to the top and just go one more, we're at the bottom. So the very last item on the list is auto capture. We go to the right, we enter auto capture. Now, the main screen is here in Start, uh, but actually I want to kind of back out of this, and so I'm just going to hit Menu to back out, because I want to show you this Select User Preset first. So we have five different presets in here, and these can be how you like to have this set up. Now, I was looking for how do you save things to it, and you don't really save things to it. You just have it set. I'm going to press OK here. And we're now in P1. And so when we go up here to program it for whatever it is that we want to do right now, that's the way P1 is. If you want to go program P2, you change it over to P2 and then program that up. Uh, there'll be some options once you get in there. Uh, so if you go into select user option, we have P1. You'll notice down at the bottom, go to the right for more information. You go to the right. Well, you can do a bunch of things in here. You can view the settings. And this is where this whole new feature feels a little 8-bit basic. Um, I kind of thought they'd go with a little nicer looking font, a little more graphics. Um, it's very simplistic, but this is kind of the, kind of the back end of what's going on. Uh, you can rename things if you want in here. So if you want to say skateboarding or BMX or snowboarding or bird feeder, you could add anything in here so it's a little bit easier to remember. And then you can copy these settings from one to the other. Um, and so this is something that you can do in here. It's kind of nice to know before we dive in here. Okay, so the start option sends us to the main screen and we can see in here uh, exactly what's going on. And we have these different options in here where we can control all the different criteria of what's going on. Now let's go ahead and go through the technical details of what each of these six different boxes are doing and the different criteria that you can use to have your camera automatically trigger and start shooting photos. All right, first up is the capture criteria. Think of this as a trigger mode. What is going to trigger the camera to start shooting photos? We have three options. We have motion, so if something is moving a particular direction or any direction in the frame. Subject detection, where it's noticing maybe a face or a type of animal or a vehicle in there or anything of that nature. Uh, next up is distance. So how far away is your subject? If it comes into a certain distance from the camera, it'll automatically trigger. So you can think about which one of those is best for what you want to do and select that one. You can also select multiple, two or three of them, all at the same time if you want. Now with motion, you're going to be able to go in and you're going to be able to control how fast something has to be moving in order to trigger it. So if something's moving very slowly, it doesn't trigger it. 
something's moving quickly, it does, or the reverse, or any combination you want. Uh, you can have different size subjects, and you can also have direction. If something is moving left to right or right to left, up and down, um, at angles, you can choose which directions are going to trigger the motion sensor to start recording. Next up with subject detection, you can choose people, animal, vehicles, everything, or you can choose a size of subject, small, medium, large. There's actually a few more options in there, but that's kind of the idea there. And then with distance, you can choose a near distance and a far distance so that it will trigger only on subjects within that distance. And you can also use the camera's autofocus system to help you determine where the near subject is and where the far subject is. Uh, so it's very precise in this manner. All right, next up is advanced motion. So if you do select motion in that first box, how exactly do you want the motion to be detected? And so we have speed and subject size. So speed is gonna give you these numbers one through five. One is pretty slow where it takes about five seconds for something to cross the frame. Five is where something takes about one second to cross the frame. And so I usually just set this to three and then adjust it from there according to whatever you need for the particular scenario. Next up is subject size, and this is kind of how many boxes it needs. And so number one is four boxes, four focus points or boxes. Uh, five means it's pretty large in size. It's gonna be like 34 boxes. And so once again, adjust according to your particular needs if you have that set. Next up is the advanced subject detection setting. So if you have it set to look at subjects, you know, like people, animals, vehicles, things like that, do you want all of them? Do you just want a specific one? Or do you want a specific size of subject? And you can choose uh, number one for a small size subject or number five for a large size subject. And that large size subject where you see 20%, that's 20% of the relative frame size, or small would be 2.5% of the relative frame size. And so you're able to get very detailed on exactly what you're getting. Next up is advanced distance setting. Now you can have this set, you can do both from near to far, and you can adjust things so that it is exactly between those two. Next up is a target area. So if you're choosing a subject, let's say a human face, where do you want it to pick up on that face in the frame? You could have it the entire area, or you could say, no, I wanna ignore all of this other area over here and only look for it in this one little spot over here. And that way you can be very direct about where you are wanting to look for that particular face. And then finally in here, the timing options. And the first option here is the record time. How long do you want the camera to shoot for when it detects whatever you want it to detect? Now, if you set it to off, it's just gonna record for as long as it's doing its thing and meeting the criteria that you have. Now, that might run through a lot of shots that you don't wanna do. And maybe you only wanna record for one second, two seconds, three seconds, or something like that. You can set that up so that it's only recording for a limited period of time. Now be aware that the camera is gonna be firing at anywhere from 30 to 120 frames per second. That's just the default mode this goes in. Uh, it's gonna be in 30, but you can, go, you can send it up to 120. And so that's why you might wanna limit this time if you wanna limit the number of photos that you're going through. Now the wait time is how long it's gonna wait after the first trigger before it triggers again. Maybe you don't want it catching on that same subject. You only want things entering the frame. And so you might have a little bit of delay so that it, let's say if you're doing a bird and a bird feeder, um, as one's leaving, you don't want to capture that part of it, but only when it's coming in. Um, there could be a wide variety of reasons why you don't want it to uh, trigger for a little period of time. So let's go through and let's do a little uh, example or two in here. We're going to bring out a little test subject in here. All right, so if you go into auto capture and you go into start, uh, you're gonna have all the different options in here. We're gonna start with this first one and we're gonna hit the okay button. Now we have it set up for motion, detect and distance and we need one of these and I am gonna go with motion. I just wanna detect something with movement, that's it. Now kind of the strange thing and I don't really like this, it says okay 
hit the check check mark and so they also have okay by the plus mark so if you you're okay with this which one do you press well the okay on the check mark simply turns the check mark on and off and the okay with the plus indicates that you are good with that selection and you want to continue on now you'll notice that the advanced distance got grayed out because we're not using it anymore the advanced subject detection grayed out we're not using it anymore all right advanced motion we're going to go in here and press ok now this is where we start turning dials always pay attention to the instructions on the bottom of the screen so we can go with something moving at a slower speed or something moving at a faster speed i'm going to put it right here in the middle i think that's fine all right Keep an eye on the directions on the bottom of the screen. Hit the minus button for direction. Let's do that. Now you can select what direction do you want to see things moving. So if you don't want to have things triggered in certain directions, you can do it like this. So what I want to do is things moving right to left off. I want it this direction and up. So when things are moving right to left or downward to upward, that's when this is going to get triggered. I'm going to hit the plus button to OK and say that this all looks good. And this looks good. And so I'm going to hit the I button, top right. See there? And that's going to exit me out of that. And what else do I have to here? OK, I have the area to work with. So I can go in here. And down at the bottom, if we hit the minus or the plus, we can select everything or nothing. Um, and then from there, we can start deselecting boxes if we didn't want this area here to be triggered for whatever reason. Now, I kind of want everything, so I'm just going to leave it all triggered there. So you could spend a bit of time setting up which area is being triggered. And I am going to uh, select the I button to go back out of this. Now, the record time. I'm just going to let it record as long as it's sensing whatever motion is going on in there. I don't really uh, need to wait after, so I'm just going to put it at zero seconds. And I think we're all good. So down in the bottom right, you'll see an I for next. So we're going to hit the I button for next. And the way that we trigger this whole thing is we're going to hit the record button on the top of the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this record button here. And now you can see the automatic capture is blinking in the upper left-hand corner. So it should trigger as soon as it sees something moving right to left or upwards. And so as I move this into frame, you'll see that nothing has happened. But if I move it right to left, it should have triggered. It's not triggering. Let's uh, end this. I'm going to hit the garbage can to end. I am going to double check my focusing settings. I am in manual focus. That probably is not helping. Let's see if that was the cause of the problem here. So we're going to go back into auto capture. I'll take this out of screen. Everything's set up the way I left it. So I'm going to hit I for next. I'll hit the record button on the top of the camera. And moving left to right, it does not doing anything. I don't know if it's the wrong size. And this. And we'll go back into the menu and take another look at what we have set up. The area set up. All. Let's take a look if we have this set to all now. So we'll hit I, I, and start. All right, so folks, the problem that I had was a simple mistake. The type that I made quite a bit at the beginning is I blocked out all of the areas for detecting motion and that's why it couldn't detect it so that was my mistake sorry but that's a common problem that anyone's likely to have all right so let's look at this again so you can see how if we move right to left it fires it focuses if i lift it up 
it does it, but if I bring it back in, it doesn't do anything, it doesn't do anything, and it fires and automatically focuses as well while it does it. Let's try changing the parameters again. I'm going to hit the record button to stop. I'm going to hit the garbage can button for ending. We're going to go back into the menu and we're going to go back to start. And actually, let's, uh, let's go back to menu. Let's change it to another one. Let's say we like that setup here. We're going to go down to user preset two and that way we can set up something new. Uh, so user preset two is set. We're going to go ahead and set to start here. We're going to have this set for uh, detection. We're going to take off motion. We're going to call that good. And now we have some other things that are grayed out. Specifically, we want to, uh, let's see, look at people. So we're going to dial it over to people. What size? I don't know. Let's just, they're smaller in frame. I'm going to go with a two. Okay. And so we'll hit I, go through that. The area. All right. So you can see everything. It's not blocked off. As we just learned in the previous section, this blocks it off so you can't see it. This allows the camera to see it and detect that motion. So that's what we want. That's good. Uh, record time, we're going to go ahead and leave that as it sits there. All right, so we're going to press the I button here. And now we're ready to get started. So we press the record button to start recording. We're going to need a face here. And so let's see if it recognizes a face there. A new face coming into the scene. Uh, let's see if it detects it upside down. Haven't tried this one. Oh, even gets it upside down. How about that? Uh, so let's uh, let's put the face of a lion. Oh, it got it, but it uh, it was faked out at first, but now it doesn't get it. How about a dog? Does it get faked off by a dog? Now, well, it looks like we we tricked it there for a moment, folks. You got uh, the lion uh, tricking it out there. So you can see this is uh, prone to some learning curve, you might say. Uh, this is something that you're going to want to really get in and play around with before you set it up on anything really important in the field. A few other important notes on this is you cannot use the DX image area, the 24 by 16 image area. There's a lot of other controls that are disabled if you are using this, and this just can't be combined with a whole host of other features. Now you can use the continuous 30 or the continuous 120 drive rate for this. Um, and so probably most people are gonna be fine with 30 frames per second, but if you wanna do 120, that is another option that you can do.